Hey, how you all? Here's Lamy Day, and I believe you all are blessed. I want to talk with you all about God. I want to talk about the Father, about the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk about how Jesus came into the picture, how he came into existence. And I know you want to hear what I have to say about that. You'll be blessed. There is something special about God. You see, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal mysteries to us. When the Bible says us, it does not mean everyone. It means Christians. And not just every Christian. Only Christians who can receive, who have learned to receive from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, study and meditate on God's Word. And the entrance of His Word, give it light. I have gotten this revelation from the Lord and I'm willing to share it with you. Not everyone listening to me will understand this. Because the revelation of the Holy Spirit is not meant for everyone. It is meant for those who are willing to receive from the Holy Spirit. So listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. I begin. I am human. And my child can only be human. Animals give birth to animals. Animals don't give birth to humans. And humans don't give birth to animals. Good. God is God. And if God is to have a child, his child can only be God. No two ways. Now, humans reproduce biologically. Animals too. But God is spirit. And spirits don't reproduce biologically. Why then is Jesus called the Son of God? How can God have a child if he doesn't have a wife? Muslims ask these questions. Some Christians too. And that's because they've not gotten to understand. They've not had the revelation. Listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. There can be no child except there are parents. In other words, there can be no son except there was a father. God in the beginning was God the Father. I would explain. I would explain. Let's talk about the disciples. Apart from Thomas, no any other disciple called Jesus God directly. This is scripture. But Jesus was referred to as God a few times in the scriptures by other apostles. But only Thomas called Jesus God directly. Jesus was never called the Father directly. The greatest revelation that was had of Jesus was when Jesus called, when Jesus asked Peter, Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter did not say, Thou art the Father. But he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Son of God, the Son of the Father. Once again, Jesus was never called the Father directly. If you say he was called the Father, it's just because of the way you understand what has been written. But it wasn't a direct statement that he is the Father. Now, examples of scriptures where the word God, G-O-D, was used in the New Testament referring to Jesus. Just for those who do not believe Jesus was called God. John chapter 20 verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Now this is a direct statement. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Let's stop there. Now, this was not a direct statement. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not a direct statement. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8-9. 
but unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Let's stop there. Now, Jesus is called God in the scripture. But I'll explain why he's called God. But in more frequent occasions, let's say to 95%, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is called God. But I want you to realize something. That even if the Father is called God more times than Jesus, you cannot separate Jesus from the Father. Why? Because they are one. And I'll explain. God the Father is the source. He began all things. I know there are people who, who just said right now, but the Bible says Jesus created all things. Yes, I do not doubt that fact. I did not say the Father created all things. I said the Father is the source and He began all things. This is true. I will explain. And the truth is, even the scriptures who talks about creating all things, none of them said Jesus created all things. Let's read them together. John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Colossians 1 16, 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Let's stop there. Now you see, these scriptures did not say all things by Jesus, but they read all things by him. Yeah, they refer to Jesus, but they do not say Jesus. This is the way I can explain this to you until I reveal what I'm going to reveal to you. So just listen. The Holy Spirit chose the, the pronouns him and not Jesus for some reasons. And you will get to find out. They both said by him. Even if Jesus already existed. And these are New Testament scriptures. Even after Jesus was ascended into heaven. So why do they not say by Jesus. But in some other scriptures. Um, Jesus is being mentioned. But when it's about the creation. Not by Jesus. There is a reason. John chapter 1 verse 1 says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here the scripture tells that the Logos, which is the Greek word for word, was in the beginning. And the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Logos is word in the Greek, and does not mean any other thing else. Keep your interpretation for now. Right? The Bible says John chapter, in John chapter 1 verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. The glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, the Logos became flesh. That was written here. The Word became flesh. It did not say Jesus became flesh. The Word became flesh. Right? Now, I want you to get this revelation. Most Christians know that Jesus Christ is the Word. But they do not understand exactly who Jesus Christ is and where he was in the beginning. I'm going to reveal this to you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 verse 19, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, and that is God. Here you see, Jesus calls the Father God. Jesus said, I am not good, but the Father, God, is good. Jesus differentiates himself from the Father. But still, some Christians will say, Jesus is the Father. But they are misunderstanding scriptures. But that is not where I'm heading to. Let's go. John chapter 17, verse 1 to 3. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only 
true God. Jesus said it again, Father, you are the only true God. Like he said in the first scripture in John, Father, you are God. There are so many other Bible verses that talks about one God, God being God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. It is clear that Paul did not say, Jesus is God here. He says there is just one God, and He is the Father. And then there is one Lord, His name is Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now it says Father of all, who is above all. Like I said when I began, the Father began all things. Just come with me. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. And who is this mediator? Jesus Christ. Now, this scripture does not say Jesus is the Father. It says there is God and there, is, there are men and there is a mediator and the mediator is Jesus Christ. That's what this scripture says. It says Jesus is the way, the truth and the life between men and God the Father. Now, people judge too quick. Don't get me wrong, because I'm not trying to say Jesus is not God. But this scripture says that the Father is God. In the beginning, I already said that Jesus is God. And I quoted scriptures where Jesus has been called God. But now I'm telling you to 95% in the scripture, according to the scriptures, the Father is called God according to the scripture now what i'm doing here is breaking down scriptures for you pointing out where the father is called god but then i'm still going to talk about jesus so just come with me right humans give birth to humans i said already right and that way god begat god also i said you cannot separate jesus from god that i said already too you see, there can only be one source, and God the Father is that source. Jesus cannot be God without the Father. The Father cannot be God without Jesus. The Holy Spirit cannot be God without the Father. Jesus cannot be God without the Holy Spirit. They are one. I would explain. They are not three gods, but they are one. John chapter 14 verse 28 says, For the Father is greater than I. These are the words of Jesus. Now Jesus is differentiating himself from the Father again. Jesus knows that the Father gave him the authority. And Jesus remained humble. He gave all glory to the Father. He gave no glory to himself. Now the Father said, I will share my glory with no one. According to Isaiah 42 verse 8. And that tells us that the Father would share his glory with no one, he says. And no one means no one. This is, a, 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 it's, it, it, this is written in the Old Testament. But when God says no one, the same God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. And when he says no one, he means no one. Some people claim that here, the Father means, I'm not going to share my glory with any graven image. He was referring to God alone. But I say no, because the scripture states, I will share my glory, I will not share my glory with another. And another means any person or anything but I would explain the Bible says in John chapter 17 verse 22 and the glory which thou gavest me 
I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. The words of Jesus. Here, the Father gave Jesus his glory. But then Jesus shares his glory with men, with us. You see? Hmm. Now I'll give you another scripture to understand this better. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 29 to, 20, um, to 31. That no flesh should glory in his presence. In whose presence? In the Father's presence. You see? Now this is a New Testament scripture. That no flesh, it says no one in the Old Testament. Now it says no flesh should glory in the Father's presence. Did you catch that? Listen. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. This scripture tells us that we cannot glory in the Father's presence because he would share his glory with no one. And he meant it. But, only in Christ Jesus, we can share His glory. Not in the Father's presence, without Jesus, but in Jesus, we can share His glory. Now you see the difference between the Father and Jesus. Now, this scripture tells us, too, that Jesus is not considered as God the Father. Now, who is Jesus? Let's get into Jesus. You cannot separate Jesus from the Father, even if he is not the Father. I would explain. The Bible says that Jesus was the Word, was the Word of God, the Logos of God. Now, here comes the revelation. There was never Jesus in the beginning. Some people just said blasphemy and this is wrong. But no, it is not blasphemy. Listen to what I have to say. I have not landed yet. I am not done yet. Just listen. There was no Jesus in the beginning yet. The Bible never says Jesus was present in the beginning. If you have Jesus Christ was there in the beginning, then open the scripture. None says that. And I'll tell you why. It only states that God was present, the Spirit was present, and the Word, which is Logos, was present. It does not say Jesus. The scripture never states Jesus was with God in the beginning. It only states the Logos was with God. I know Jesus is the Logos, but in the beginning, The Logos was present, but not Jesus. Don't get confused. You'd understand right now. The Word in the beginning was not Jesus. The Word was the Word. The Greek word says, the Spirit was present, the Father was present, and the Word, Logos, was present. Logos wasn't Jesus. The Logos was the Logos of God. In other words, Jesus did not exist yet, but the Logos existed. So who is this wonderful Jesus? And where was he in the beginning? Now, let's assume we are all present in a classroom. And I said a word. I did not just make a sound. I said a word. And everyone heard me. The teacher heard what I said, but the teacher did not know I was the one. Now, what do you think the teacher is going to ask? Or how do you think the teacher is going to ask the question if she wants to know where the sound came from? The teacher is not going to say, what was that? What is the teacher going to say? Who was that? Because the teacher heard my words. The teacher knows that these words can only come from a person. It just says, who was that? Then everybody would answer. It was him. Or, it was his voice. 
his voice with the pronoun nobody would say it was the voice because the voice cannot just come without a person catch this if you hear the president talk in the radio you cannot see the president but you can hear his voice you can listen to his words what would you say you would say the president is talking but you're hearing his words how do you know it's the president because of his word this reveals that words identify with people you cannot separate me from my words the Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks therefore you are what you say and the same way you cannot separate God from his word logos therefore God is what he says Jesus is his only begotten son catch this revelation Psalm chapter 138 verse 2 says for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name did you get that the father God magnified cherished his word above his name hmm in the beginning when God spoke he spoke the word he spoke Logos now listen let's go back to John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the Logos and the Logos was with God the same was in the beginning with God it was the Logos that was with God verse 3 all things were made by him it didn't say by Jesus it says by him now you see all things were made by him it's coming back again not by Jesus but by who by the Logos you see the Logos has got a pronoun here and not by it but by him and without him was nothing made that was made without the word without the logos not Jesus but the logos now I want you to realize you see that this logos was the word that was spoken by God now let's go back to the first words that God said in the beginning God did not say let my spirit move upon the face of the waters no that was not the first thing God said because the Bible says that the Spirit of God moved he moved God did not say spirit move so what were what were his first words Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and God said let there be light and there was light verse 4 and God saw that the light that it was good and God divided the light from darkness this light is called day and darkness is called night now I want you all to note because some Christians think that this light here refers to the Sun and the moon and the stars they think it refers to the sun moon and stars but no because the sun moon and stars were created on the fourth day not the first day hmm. I want you to also know that the Hebrew meaning for light here and darkness here is not what you think in the English light means illumination that's the word here and darkness here does not mean night as written in the English but it means obscurity yeah but then on the fourth day in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 18 the moon and the 
um, um, the sun were created. Hmm. So if these two great lights were created on the fourth day, what is this light which God spoke on the first day? And God saw that this light was good and he separated this light from darkness. Some of you already received the revelation that I'm trying to give. But now let's go back to John chapter 1 verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 3 says, All things were made by him, by the Logos. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Did you catch that? In the Logos was life, and the life in the Logos was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light that was that is in the logos shines in darkness and darkness comprehended it not verse 9 that was the true light the first light the first light ever which lighted every man that cometh into the world did you catch that oh <laughs> glory to god when God the Father spoke the Logos in the beginning, on the first day, the Logos came out from the Father and became the true light that John talks about. And here, folks, was the creation of the Word, who is the Son of God. <laughs> who darkness couldn't comprehend and God separated from darkness who is the true light that John is talking about in John chapter 1 verse 14 and the light the word was made flesh now here brothers the son of God was formed in John chapter 1 to be called Jesus but in the beginning, he wasn't Jesus. He was the word that came out from God. He was the light, the true light of God. But some people would still ask, but how can the word of God be the one to create things? You've not gotten to understood that we are talking about God here not just words that we are speaking what did Jesus say in John chapter 6 verse 63, 63 Jesus says the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life John chapter 1 verse 4 says and the life was the light of men what does that tell us that it was the word who is life and that word of God is life and you cannot compare the spiritual realm with what we see around us right now in the physical realm imagine what happened in Garden of Eden when I say the word God spoke was life I don't just mean life I mean the word was living the Bible says, for the word of God is quick and powerful. But another version says it better. For the word of God is living and active. Much more active than you are right now. That's the word of God. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Catch this. And they, Adam and Eve, I mean Adam, the man and the woman, heard the voice of of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. He does not say they heard God walking, but they heard the word of God walking. The word had life. The word was living in the beginning. The word could move. The word of God did not have this image of Jesus we saw on earth because that was the first time he put on flesh. He did not put on flesh when he was in heaven. He was the Word. But in John, he put on flesh 
and he had the name Jesus. Another revelation that I have for you. Jesus gave so many parables and he likened his word to be a seed. And he likened our words to be seeds. Now, um, when you speak, when your voice is heard by someone, a seed is planted. Now, when the word was sent to Mary, Mary believed the word. And the seed of God, the word of God, was planted in her. Whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap. What you say, you would get. That's what it means. And Mary received the word, and the word was planted in her. And there the angel did not say, that is Jesus in you. No. The Bible says that thing. The Bible called the baby a thing. A thing in you. That's what the Bible says. But I don't want to call it thing. Because the word is not a thing. Did you catch that? The angel did not say that's Jesus in you. It says the thing. Referring to the word. That person. That word in you. That living word in you. When you conceive that word, when you give birth to that word, then he shall be called Jesus. Because before he wasn't called Jesus, he was called the word. You know, people just form stories according to their understanding. You know, um, this is scripture here. You know, we're not just talking about a storybook. The heavenly world is not like the world we live in right now. Some people think the father... You know, in heaven just stood up and said, Now, I'm going to die for my people. I'm going to disappear. And I'm going to appear in Mary. And then she would give birth to me as a baby. And then I would go and die on the cross. Oh no, that's not God. We are talking about God here. Some people think the story goes this way. God was sitting on the throne, the Father. And Jesus on his right hand. And the Holy Spirit on his left hand. And Jesus said, and the Father said, So who is going to die for my children? Who is going to die for the world? Is it you, my son? Is it you, Spirit? And the Son said, Father, I will. And the Father said, Okay, Son, we will miss you. We love you. Go and die. Oh, no, that's not God. That's not God. Some people think, the father is sitting on the throne. And the father said, Jesus, would you, my son, Jesus, would you die for the world? And Jesus said, yes, father. And the father said, because only you can do it. I'll miss you. And Jesus became small and disappeared from heaven. And all the angels saw him going from heaven and were waving him. And then he entered Mary. That is not God. All these are fair tales. These are... It, that's not God for us. God is bigger than this. There was no conversation made in heaven like, who is going to go? Let's say who is going to go. No way. God knows the beginning from the end. Everything was done perfectly. Perfectly. The word was not human. The word was the word. And the word went into Mary because the word was life, the word was a seed, the life of God, the word of God. You, without my word, you cannot know I am present. That is why God cannot be separated from his word. The word came directly out of God and the word became flesh. The Old Testament says in Psalm chapter 107 verse 20, he God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Here, the Bible is talking about the word of God. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Now, who came to the world to heal us and to deliver us? The word. And when that word came, the word had to put on flesh and he was called Jesus. Note, the Bible says in John chapter 16 verse 28, I 
the word came forth from the father it, it does not say i am the father i came forth from the father and i'm come into the world again and i leave the world and i go to the father you see if you if 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 i don't speak my message will not be sent god spoke the word and his message was sent and that message is jesus the scripture makes us know also in first john chapter 5 verse 7 for there are three that bears record in heaven i like that first john chapter 5 verse 7 for there are three that bears record in heaven <laughs> the father the word who became Jesus and the Holy Ghost the scripture does not say the Father Jesus and the Holy Ghost but the word because he was the word did you catch that now anyway you see that pronoun the world was created by the word not Jesus the word became Jesus now note the word became flesh and when we saw the word when we saw him we saw God because he came from God Jesus told Philip if you have seen me you have seen the Father and some Christians claim for this reason Jesus said I am the Father that's not what Jesus said Jesus said if you have seen me you have seen the Father if you have heard me on the radio you have heard me talking if you hear the voice of the president you have heard the president that's what it means Jesus is not the father Jesus is God but he is the word made flesh of the father now if you still claim Jesus is the father what about this scripture Exodus chapter 33 verse 20 and he said thou canst not see my face for there shall no man see me and leave now this is the Old Testament but God here says no man shall see me he did not say this generation shall not see me he said no man no man means no man not in this lifetime shall see me here on earth no man shall see me and leave nobody can see the father and leave people claim they've had revelations of the father seeing him in light nobody can see him and leave here on earth but still we saw Jesus note John chapter 1 verse 18 no man had seen God at any time did you catch that but people saw Jesus they only begotten son which is the bosom which is in the bosom in the bosom of the father in the bosom did you catch that he had declared him John chapter 6 verse 46 no not that anyone had seen the father except the one who is from God he calls the father God again God only he has seen the father did you catch that he is from God Jesus is from God He's from the Father. He's not the Father, but from the Father. Hmm. First John chapter 4, verse 12. No man had seen God at any time. Note here, the apostle is writing this, John. Apostle saw God. He saw Jesus. He saw God. But he's telling us, no man had seen God, referring to the Father. No man had seen the Father. He had not seen the Father yet. He had not seen God yet. But he saw Jesus. He saw God the Son. This was even after Jesus had ascended into heaven. He still says no one had seen God. Oh, that's the Father here. Now, who is the Holy, Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. He is also a complete person. God's Spirit came out of him and moved upon the face of the waters. 
I cannot send my spirit out of me. Right? And my spirit will be one. But my body is not going to have life anymore when my spirit comes out. But not with God. His spirit came out of him. And his spirit lives. Oh, glory to God. His spirit is complete when God is here. And God's word is complete. That is why they are one. Because it is his spirit. And his spirit can live com in completeness. And God is still complete. That is this God we serve. And you can also feel the presence of the Spirit. But some people say you cannot feel Him. But you can. You don't have to feel Him every time. But you can. Why not? Because He has got beautiful characteristics. The Bible says that the Spirit came upon Jesus in form of a dove. It does not say He is a dove. But He came in form of a dove. Which means He can carry different forms. Wonderful Spirit of God. The Bible says he can appear in form of a flood. Because the scripture says that when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. He does not say the enemy would come in like a flood. That's a mistake also in King James with the comma. It says when the enemy shall come in. Like a flood, the Spirit of God shall raise up a standard against him. Powerful Spirit of God. The, enemy, the, um, the, the, the Holy Spirit can come in form of a wind. As a rushing mighty wind. And you want to tell me when a, rush, when a rushing mighty wind comes into the room, you're not going to feel him? You're going to feel him. As rivers of living water. As fire. The Holy Spirit can come as fire. The Bible says God is consuming fire. He is our comforter. He is our help. He is the spirit of truth. He is gift. He is the promise of the Father to us. And He seals us. And without His seal, we cannot make the rapture. When Jesus Christ comes again, and He doesn't find you with the seal, you will not be taken. And that is why we need His Spirit in us. Because only the presence of His Spirit can give us life. And He will glorify Jesus. That's what the Word says. That He will glorify Jesus and He will receive of Jesus and show it to us. So the truth is, Jesus is not here on earth right now. But the Holy Ghost is. Complete. Jesus and the Father are in heaven now why do you hear me say Jesus isn't the father the Bible the scripture doesn't say so you know Jesus came from the father he is one with the father the image of the father according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 but he always differentiated himself from the father the non-Trinitarians misunderstand this, unfortunately. And that's why they believe what they believe. Now here are two final scriptures I want to give to you to ponder on. John chapter 14 verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode. Did you get that? And we... Plural, we, Elohim, in the beginning, plural, noun, and we, will. Jesus did not say, I will. Jesus did, did not say, the Father will. But Jesus says, we will. And you still tell me Jesus is the Father. Then who do you say means we? We means we. It's plural. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23 to 28. But every man in his own order... Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ are his coming. Verse 24. Then cometh the end when he, Jesus Christ, shall have delivered up the kingdom to who? To God, even the Father. 
Jesus is going to deliver the kingdom to the Father. And you tell me Jesus is the Father? Oh no. He's the Word of God. Living Word of God. Not the Father, but the living Word of God. But equal to the Father, but the living Word of God. Now, let's continue. When He, Christ, shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, he is going to put down all rule, authority, and power. The Bible reveals to us that the power has been given to me. That Jesus said so. Now, the power which has been given to him, he is going to put it down. Listen, verse 25. For he, Christ, must reign. He must reign till, till, till he had put all enemies under his feet. These are not my words, but the word of God. Verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. Which did put all things under him. God put all things under him. Listen. Verse 28. And when all things shall be subdued under Jesus, then shall the Son, that's Jesus, also himself be subject unto him, God the Father, that put all things under him, that God the Father may be all in all. This is the word of God. And just to add, now you know what the truth is. You see, you know what the truth is. And the truth can never be proven wrong because it's God's word. God's word is true. Jesus could not be proven wrong. The, uh, the um, Pharisees and the scribes could bring up points in their own ways. If you give a scripture and the scripture is true, if you give a word and the word is true, other people who don't agree with you cannot prove that word wrong because it is true. What they can do is bring up other scriptures to prove why they are right and why you would be wrong. But they can't prove what you have said wrong and that makes it true. And that is God's word. God's word is true and will be forever true. Now, no one told me about this. Only the Lord told me this. As I was studying my scripture, I, re I received this revelation about two years ago. I could not tell anyone. I only told a friend of mine because I couldn't tell anyone because I couldn't tell anyone because I didn't know what people would say that, are you crazy? You know, Jesus is the light of God, the word of God, you know, in the beginning, and the word came out of doubt. That's the creation of Jesus. But listen, the Bible says, for we are all baptized into one spirit, and the spirit is going to witness to us. I got this revelation two years ago, but then some days ago, <laughs> about two weeks ago, I believe, I heard someone say the same thing. And that's why I have the boldness now to let this out. And this is a man of God who said this thing. His name is Peristone. Peristone said, the Lord revealed to him that Jesus is that light that was made in Genesis chapter 1. The Word. And then I said, this is what I, I have known. What I wrote down, um, this is what I told my friend. You see? But then, catch, listen to this. The father of Perry Stone, his name is Fred Stone. He's now passed away. He's now in heaven. Fred Stone was a great man of God. And he functioned, functioned in every gifts of the Spirit. Fred Stone had a revelation. And he saw himself in heaven in the library. And he wanted to take a book in the library in heaven. <clears throat> and the Lord said, no, 
that is not yours. And then he left that book and he took another book. And that book he wanted to take was a prophetic book. A prophetic book in heaven. And then Fred Stone told his son, Perry, later, that that prophetic book was his, was for Perry. And God is going to reveal mysteries to Perry Stone. And Perry Stone is going to receive mysteries that no one has ever heard before. Now, I want to say something. I received this revelation. I never heard it before in my life. But then I heard it two weeks ago from Perry. I am not saying I received it before Perry Stone. Probably Perry Stone knew this a long time ago. But what I'm saying is that the Holy Spirit revealed it to me too. Exactly what Perry said two two weeks ago or so, I received two years ago. Can you see how remarkable God is and how the Holy Spirit is? And just in case you don't know Perry, I would advise you listen to him. He's a great man of God. And there is also something I want to say. I've made videos on the rapture, about the rapture and the coming of Jesus Christ and how to prepare to make the rapture. But I'm not a person who gives you dates that the Lord's going to come Tomorrow is going to come on the 14th, on the 17th, on the 11th. I don't do that. Okay? Because the Bible stays, states specifically, no one knows the date, day, nor the hour. But it does not say no one knows the season. We can know the season by the Spirit of God. Because we are children of the light and we have to get ready. So the Spirit is going to give us the signs to get ready. We know it's the season. And if you see everything that is happening right now, you know it's the season. The Bible reveals everything that is happening right now. And I just want you all to, I just want to tell you all to get ready. Perry Stone said something um, three days ago, and I listened to him. And he said something he never says to. Perry Stone is not a person who gives dates. He doesn't do that. But then he said, he knows when God speaks to him. And when he woke up, in his room, the Lord said, the Antichrist is presently in the earth, right now, as we speak. And that is why I want to tell you all, everything is coming together, that the coming of the Lord is imminent. So get ready all, and be blessed in Jesus' name.